tease Mike that, Mike, you're exceeding your expectations in your life. You should be bagging groceries, but not at a busy grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not. He's a firefighter, and he is designed to do that. Mike is a born firefighter. This is what he was designed to do. This is what he was put on the earth to do, but without some help, he, he's bagging groceries, but not at a busy grocery store. Because he is way closer to Deadpool than he is to, to Captain America. And the scary thing about Deadpool is that's real close to jail, <laughs> you know? That's real close to not doing anything with your life. That is a fine line. And you guys have classrooms full of those little kids. Uh, you have classrooms with kids that can't focus. Anybody have that? Do you know what we call But you have kids that can focus, right? They can look at you and you tell you 45 minutes in class and they're just locked in. Maybe you want, right? You know what happens to that kid as a firefighter? He gets hurt extremely bad because he's not paying attention to everything. A little attention deficit kid can turn into the firefighter that walks in and goes, okay, I hear the fire up above me, the floor feels good, I'm listening to the radio, I'm also listening to my partner, how much air do I have in my tank? That's something we think about on a minute by minute basis. We're thinking of every single thing and some of your kids are doing that, they just haven't had it focused into the right things. Right now they're just thinking about everything. You might have a little kid that will not stop talking about Fortnite. But he is going to go and create code that's going to create a machine that tests for cancer in your saliva. Like he is going to do something great. And the difference between Deadpool and not doing anything is you. And so my first message, and this is important, is what you're doing is important. What you're doing is super important. And I'm not the only one that's, that said it's important. Uh, this is something I got off of the, the internet about your school. The teachers are f fantastic. My daughter can't wait to go, and th that says it all for my family. This is not me. This is this is this is your family. They're saying Triumph Academy is a great learning environment. The school employees are the most qualified educators in the area. That is you. They are talking about you. Uh, the school employees are most qualified. Teachers are awesome and really show interest in kids. Staff is helpful, and kids are awesome. Triumph Academy excels with parent communication and partnership. The school's atmosphere is incredible and welcoming. Yeah, family oriented. Give yourself a hand. That's awesome. Good job. That is the mountain. Did that make you feel good when I said that? When I said, hey man, you're awesome. Does that make you feel good? That is the mountaintop. And I've got some experience on the mountaintop. This is me on the top of any any geography people? Oh, yeah. What is the tallest mountain in South America? Anybody know the name of that? The tallest mountain in South America? It's called Aconcagua. It's almost 23,000 feet. It's actually the tallest mountain outside the Himalayas. So nowhere in the world is, I was standing on the top tallest mountain in the world outside of the Himalayas where Mount Everest and all that is. Awesome experience. And getting there felt awesome. But you know what it took to get there? 10 days of extremely hard physical labor. I climbed up and down, up and down that mountain for 10 days to get there. Now, on a side note, if anybody's dating, if you bring a picture of your girlfriend to the top and take a picture of that and give it to her, she might even marry you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome experience. A lot of hard work, though. A lot of really hard work to get there. And what you guys did to get these right here is a lot of hard work. And I want to recognize that, that I see that, that you guys are doing a lot of hard work. What you guys did outside, I'm impressed. I pulled in, I'm like, that's a ton of cars, I'm never gonna get a spot. I pulled in, I got a spot, people were moving, it was a reply with the whistles and the sign. Good job. Oh, that's awesome. yeah, I appreciate it. But this is the hard, this is the bad part about mountain climbing. You're up at the mountain. It took me 10 days to get up there, 23,000 feet. Do you know how many days it took me to get back to the valley, back to the city? One. I climbed back down, and this is a, that's a punch in the gut. And this is, it took me a while to find this, but this is on the internet about you guys. Worst possible choice we've ever made in our child's education. <laughs> Literally wouldn't send my dog here if I were going away for the week. <laughs> that is on the internet about you. When did you take over school? 2015. Okay, I had to go back to 2009, so you're good. <laughs> but that is a punch in the gut, isn't it? That is the, that's the bottom. Someone ripped, and, and I couldn't find a lot. I found two or three, and I picked that one because the dog line, I thought that was it. Well, we all know this person, right? This person was going to be unhappy no matter what you did. But that's a punch in the gut, and as teachers, we get punched in the gut a lot, right? We get, we get this high, and then we go in the valley, and the valley's okay, but we need some wins, but sometimes as teachers, and, and me as a firefighter, I get a bunch of losses. I get a bunch of really hard, and it, sometimes it, that valley turns into a desert, 
right? If we keep walking in that desert, eventually you lose all resources, which for us is energy, and, and you die. And as, when teachers die, they become realtors. <laughs> <laughs> or they, they, they go do something else. They, they move on, right? They, I just thought you guys are important, right? You guys are creating the next group of heroes, right? Those, those little superheroes that are in your class, you're, you're creating the heroes that are going to come work for me. I'm going to be a fireman for a long time. We're probably longer than I should. They're going to come work for me, and I need you guys to do that. I don't want you to spend your entire life in that, that desert where it's dry and bad things happen. I want you to get you to the mountaintop. So I'm going to give you five ways that myself as a firefighter uh, have, have overcome that burnout. Anybody ever feel burned out? All right. And again, situational awareness, we're close. The door is <laughs> get it. So I'm going to give you five ways. The first way is I want to give you permission to have a bad day and to feel bad. This should make you feel bad. And that is a totally appropriate feeling. I'm gonna give you, prop this is a story, it's probably my least favorite story to ever tell, but I'm gonna tell you about the worst call I've ever been on. Uh, we got a call, I was on Engine 6, this is a couple of summers ago, we got a call for a kid uh, locked in a car, not a big deal, I brought my big Caligar bar because we're gonna smash something and we show up. And there's a fairly nice <coughs> neighborhood in the city of Pontiac, newer homes, and there's no kid in the, the car. And as we open, the garage doors open, we walk in, I see a man holding a kid, and he's screaming, and he's smashing his own head against the ground, laying on the ground, smashing his own head. I'm like, sir, can I see your kid? Sir, let me see your kid. And he's just, he's out of it. And I wrestled this kid away. And as I wrestled the kid away, I realized the kid wasn't breathing, and didn't have a pulse. So I went to take the kid away from the father because he was going nuts, and he was trying to take this kid from me because we're starting to do CPR now. Unresponsive, probably a year and a half old. And I've got little kids, looks just like my kids. We're doing CPR and the dad will not stop coming at us to the point where I had to take one of my firefighters and have him physically restrain this guy. Tackle him and hold him down so the police could get there so they could restrain him. And I'm doing CPR on this baby. We get the top off because you know, we're putting the AED on to shock the, shock the kid. And I look, I see burn marks on this kid. And I look over at the dad and I start screaming at him, hey, did you burn your kid? Did you burn your kid? And he will not answer me. And I don't know what's going on, but I see these burn spots. We get in the ambulance. We start heading to the hospital. We got the story with the dad was drunk, forgot he had the kid in the back, and he was sitting in the car. And because of the heat, the kid's skin started to melt off. By the time we got to the hospital, his face had sloughed off, the left side of his arm had sloughed off, and this young man at a year and a half old passed away and died. It, it shook me up, worst call I've ever been on. So I, I call, we have counselors. It's, for us, it's a chaplain, a former battalion chief. Hey, chief, this was bad. Can you come and talk to us? Yeah, Dan, I can come talk to you. So, we get in there, we're, we're talking, and he says, uh, what happened? We tell him the story, and how do you feel? I said, you know what? I feel like taking a baseball bat, smashing that dude's face, and just, just beating his face in. That was a feeling that I had. And you know what he said? I, I understand why you feel that way. But you know what I didn't do? I didn't bash the guy's head in for the baseball bat, but I felt like that. And what my, what my chaplain did, and, and what I want you guys to know, is that was an okay feeling. Right, because it was just a feeling. It was a terrible experience. It still gets me. Right, that was four years ago. It still gets me, and it's still okay to have bad feelings. When you get kicked in the gut and you have something terrible like this, uh, whatever it is in your life, it is okay to feel bad. Give yourself permission to feel bad. You're human. It's just a feeling. My dad told me though that feelings will always change. You guys are gonna go on spring break. And you're gonna have who said we're, we're, who's the furthest going away? Were you Iceland or something? Netherlands. Netherlands. Netherlands? You're going to Netherlands. That's going to be an awesome feeling. But you know what? It's going to happen in two weeks. You're going to be back here. <laughs> it's going to be good, but not as good. Feelings change. So give yourself permission to feel bad when something bad happens, and then realize it's not going to last forever. Because I still don't feel bad on a daily basis about that little kid. I feel bad when I talk about it, but I, I'm going to be okay. Give yourself permission. You're human. Feel bad. The other thing you have to give yourself permission is to be tired, right? Being tired, anytime you do something that's hard and challenging, it's hard work. I teach at the Oakland Fire Academy, and we do a scenario where we drop a firefighter into a basement, and we, we send two people, hey, go get him. And any firefighter, most firefighters, like I'm, I weigh about 200 pounds. When I put my gear on, I weigh 250, 260, easy. There is no easy way to grab somebody that weighs 260 pounds grab a hold of them, drag them to the stairs, and then drag them up a flight of stairs. So they, they come up, these cadets come up, and they like pass out like, oh, Captain Dumas, 
oh, I'm so, I'm, so, I'm exhausted. They like lay on the ground. What, what did I do wrong? <laughs> she didn't do anything wrong. That, that dude weighs 250 pounds. That is hard. You're doing hard things. It is okay to be tired. You guys are creating superheroes. It's okay to be tired. You're not failing because you're tired and mentally exhausted and drained. You're doing something hard. And when you go home at the end of the day and you feel exhausted, it's because you're doing something important. Don't feel like you're fa a failure when, because you're doing something important. I think that's part of the burnout sometimes. Like, I'm just exhausted. What am I doing wrong? Why is this so hard? It's hard because it's worth it. It's hard because it's important. It's hard because you're putting in lots and lots of effort and there's no way, there's no possible way to grab a guy that weighs 250 pounds, yank him up two flights of steps and it not be hard. Anybody work out and do burpees? <laughs> are burpees ever easy? No, they were always hard. Maybe the first three are easy and then they're always hard. It's because it's hard work. You guys are doing hard work. Please give yourself permission to do hard things and to be exhausted when you do it. It is okay, you're not failing. You're doing hard things. So, first thing is, give yourself permission to feel bad and realize that's gonna change. Give yourself permission to be tired. And the second thing is important is to uh, expand, I, I call it moving your middle. In the fire service, it's a very physically demanding job, but I realized that I'm comfortable in the middle. So, whatever the middle is, whether it's a task I'm performing or something physical I'm performing, I operate in the middle and that's comfortable. So in order to know where my middle is, I have to know what the easiest thing in the world is. So physically, because my job is physical, I know that sleeping <coughs> is about the easiest thing there can be. And then I have some things that I've done that are physically demanding, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, and then I'm comfortable in the middle. So if I want to make something harder in my middle, I can't sleep harder to move the middle, at least that way. So I got to do something physically demanding. And one of the things I did, a couple years ago, or uh, excuse me, last November, I ran a race called the World's Toughest Mudder. Anybody run the Tough Mudder? So it was not up in Oxford. It's, you should. It's awesome. It's coming in June. This is the World's Toughest Mudder. It's, uh, it's a big race. There's 1,200 people. It's a five-mile track, and you see how many times you can do it in 24 hours. So <coughs> I'm excited. I did lap one. That's five miles. Yeah, things are good. I did lap two. I'm feeling good. That's 10 miles. Uh, lap three, I'm a little bit tired. It's starting to get cold. Lap four, it's starting to get dark out. It got down to 28 degrees. It was down in Georgia. Things started freezing. It's hard to see. Lap five, uh, no smiles at lap six. At mile 35, um, I, I didn't want my picture taken, but my mom was there. So she <laughs> took my picture. And lap, lap eight, before I went to lap nine, I was physically and mentally exhausted. But I'm not right now. And today, if you said, hey, Danny, you got to get home. I'm 54 miles from being home. I was like, man, that's, that stinks, but I, I can go 45 miles going through obstacles with a wetsuit on, jumping over obstacles, jumping into nasty, muddy water. I can do that. I got to go home and see my family, because I'm going on spring break too, Sunday, I'm going to Florida. <laughs> I could do that. I could walk home from here if I had to. My middle has been moved. You know, my middle has been moved. Now, I'm not suggesting to become a good teacher. You have to go run 45 miles to the world's toughest mudder, but you can change your perspective. I had an awesome change of perspective a couple years ago. Hurricane Matthew came through and really wreaked havoc on the country of Haiti. We sent, uh, I was part of a uh, medical team that went down there to take care of some of the damage they had. And we showed up and these, these people didn't have anything. We, I was taking care of some kids and the moms would come in and say, my stomach, or the baby's stomach's hurting. It was through an interpreter, so it was kind of hard. And uh, after four of them, I, I, I would ask, you know, are they using the restroom, all the medical questions. I'm like, well, does anything make it feel better? <coughs> yeah, when they eat, it feels better. After the fourth one, I went, they're hungry. These little kids were telling me, the moms were telling me their kids were hungry and their stomach was hurt. I'm thinking a medical problem because here, they have food. Food's not that, you know, it might be, you can go and get food. You could steal it if you needed to. There, they can't even steal it. You couldn't go steal food because there isn't the food. Totally changed my perspective. If you're feeling like you're overwhelmed here, you know, you go to Haiti this summer. It will totally change what you think challenging is hard and or is hard. So my third thing, if you're struggling with burnout, maybe just change your perspective. You know, go up to Detroit and volunteer for a week. I bet it's harder there than it is here. I don't know that for sure, but you know, change your perspective. It's true. Yeah, possibly. It is uh, good. So change your perspective. Um, and the uh, the last thing, and this is 